We get how uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's going to happen next? We are. Because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. Our generation has a choice. Turn away from the world's problems or chase them down. We refuse to sit back and watch them pass us by. Watch us fly ahead. Rise to every challenge and overcome anything. Watch us become the next greatest generation. A rare repeat in the Rally Cry Collegiate Series awaits us as the grand final of week number four's bracket uh, hastily approaches. Um, Relic, I'm joined by Galgan. It's Drexel Dragons. It's Terps Esports. One has already locked in first place in the seeding, Galgan. The other is currently third. Could find themselves second, but are they the favorite Terps Esports? The previous, uh, previous result, I should say, suggests perhaps not. Well, you could make that argument, but I think we may learn a little differently this time that Terps Esports are ready more than they ever will be for this particular rematch. There's a lot on the line. The last time these two teams met, it was technically a grand final, but also still the semifinal. So while the winner in Drexel did manage to nab 100 points for their win, it was only 40 for Terps Esports, given the fact that they technically dropped down to the third place match, but then had a forfeit win there. Technicalities aside, this is the grand final, baby. This is for all of the proverbial marbles right now. You know, put aside all of your reservations about what the seeding's gonna look like for the playoffs. Both of these teams know they're gonna be towards the top of the table. The question is, who has the honor? Is it Drexel Dragons who go 2-0 against this Terps Esports roster and really try to put them in the mud or do terps esports level the playing field and make it anyone's guess as to who's going to take the ultimate crown drexel esports certainly wants to grab that second closed qualifier win but they've got a very strong maryland roster in their way and to be fair what can we talk about in terms of previous form oakland are they really good and it's just the terps were even better or was it a bit of a a so-so game from Terps Esports overall. I think we're going to find out pretty quickly. That's a decent start from JD Knight, albeit the shot going off the crossbar. Kevin going infield, very quick counter-attack from Drexel Dragons, just centimeters away really from making connection. Hexy now going for the drive downtown. Turtle tries to get this 50. It's ultimately neutral. Hexy towards the net to Turtle again. Guys popping off and refuses to stop. Listen, I know this series is supposed to go to seven games like it did before, but if Turtle continues playing as well as he did in the closeout of that series against Oakland, it might be rats, like this early on. I don't call it like it is that often, but Turtle is clearly on one right now, and Drexel Dragons have to understand that that needs to be priority numero uno to find a solution to, and Baron tries to provide just that, not quite yet. So lovely play but kevin is denied by two it is double commit unpunished turtle the flick over one who surf playing with fire that could have gone anywhere really big demo on jd knight fire baron still there hunter through steel hexy runs into traffic backboard still turtle double commit again baron in field for surf turtle great stop kevin with the 180 dime turn jd knight a little bit pressurized there, manages to, man, uh, doesn't manage to get a piece of the ball, I should say, rather. Baron now, backboard. It is relentless from Drexel Dragons, who continue to pummel the backboard. But finally, a bit of a free for Terps Esports, but how brief will it be? The only problem is, it's been pinned in this corner for so long, and I've seen a couple of team bumps from Drexel in that very same corner. So that slows down their efficiency. Terps Esports get a going opposite side of the field. Not much else from there. Baron on the follow-up 
trying to instill some sort of pressure here. Space allowed for Drexel to get going, but Hexy blocks against two. Zerf picks it right clean for the midfield line. Couple of misses, but Turtle nabs it from the goal line. Kevin sends it right back where it came from, follows up his own shot. The Turtle with a beautiful touch out and a contest on the second as well, meaning that Drexel aren't getting the looks that they want in front of the net just yet. But they're sure as heck fighting for it as much as they can. JD Knight denies another one. One minute of solid Drexel Dragons pressure. Surely it's going to... Oh my goodness. It really should have ended in a goal right down the other end. Incredible. That has to be a goal for Drexel. And Turks Esports have shown them exactly what price they are going to pay as Zerf almost respawns off that demo. Got about as close as you could without connecting any pixels. And Maryland's up by two. Un real and they might be in for a third 1v1 hexy oh strong defense there from kevin i believe it was who made that way more difficult than perhaps otherwise it could have been baron demo for his troubles out from the back kevin with the pop-up over one hexy looking watching Breeby's number two gets past him as well thrown away by turtle who is truly playing with that lesian quality on this championship sunday jd knight misses out Zerf goes to the skies, top of the box. Kevin's the setup, maybe here. Backboard, drop down. Is there a third? No, Baron was simply not close enough. For all four weekends of play, I cannot overstate how scary it is to see this Turks Esports team when they are clicking, because we've had our questions about changing the players out, not getting the results they wanted. That's a big double up, though. Kevin has plenty of time to set this one up and goes for the bump instead. The rotation through from JD Knight has enough time. Turtle goes downfield somewhat. Hexy, not quite ideal, but gets it to the sidewall anyway. A bit more space on for Maryland. They've got to the 100 seconds mark without letting Drexel score. Drexel Dragons, they've got the firepower, but they don't seem to have the ability. I mean, I don't know what the Terps defense is made out of, but it's quite frankly uh, something of an inhuman substance. Oh, speak too soon. No way. Off the line. And touch the post. They've literally erected a deflector shield around this goal. I'm convinced. I'm getting flashbacks. Game three yesterday. Everything you oh, try no to way. do to score, and you try your best, but you cannot succeed. There are 60 seconds left, and every single shot from Drexel is either saved immediately or taken away by shavings off of the woodwork. Baron tries to put it back central, but Zerf too far forward, Kevin too far to the side, and it slows down yet again as they're forced to back pass just to step this up. Demo Turtle, Kevin pop up, who's in support Zerf's there. Hexy challenges, somewhat successful. Follow up from Zerf, bit too much power on it. Goes over to Kevin, Baron looking for the infield play. Hexy's there, Baron two. Oh, Zerf too far forward, drives to the far side. Got boost to use, top of the box. Again, too heavy the touch, and would you believe it? I can't. They're gonna walk away as clean as can be from this game, but you would wonder how they've done it. Feels like highway robbery. Kevin just looks too far out through the midfield. 23 to play. Sign sealed delivered for Maryland. They continue today with another strong start to the series. What is the Drexel Dragons get back here? How do they find their way in? Questions for later. For now, Drexel Dragons would just want one goal any goal because it's been an extra it, it has been truly mind-numbing how they have not scored they might yet concede a four turtle has been outstanding in every metric by far one of the best defensive performances in a single game that we have ever seen on the Rally Cry Collegiate Series. That defense will concede one, uh, but it's so non effectual on this game, Galgan. It's not even worth considering, really. 1 0 Terps in the series. Could make so many arguments about that one. Garbage time goal, not preserving the clean sheet, what have you. They knew the game was secured. Didn't really matter. We move on. It's a first win for Maryland. But this is the talking point that I feel like we're going to revisit a lot, especially as we get into playoffs, if Maryland continue this run of form. You can have the conversation all you want about whether or not a team is clicking, whether or not they feel like they're warmed up, ready to go in whatever series they're playing. But the fact of the matter is, Maryland have shown up right here, 
right now. It's not the playoffs, but over the past, you know, I'd say three games, given they are on a three-game win streak if you count the final two of the prior series, over the last three games, they have not switched off for a moment. And that is very, very concerning for anybody they go up against. Drexel Dragons, like I said at the beginning of the game, they have some questions to answer on their own front, but now Maryland have just hit them with the entire textbook, the almanac of sorts, and expected them to decipher it in five minutes' time. Yeah, UT Dallas is just sitting back on the proverbial couch and saying, look, it's not so easy, is it? It's not so easy. Like, you're there criticizing us, saying, oh, I can't believe they didn't beat Terps. When Terps is genu uh, genuinely looking... Oh, sorry. Terps. My apologies. UT Dallas is basically saying, you know, look, it's so easy to hit the net. It's not easy to hit the net, is it? It's... Uh, You've got to feel for Drexel Dragons. I don't think they could have played any better. Do you agree with me on that? I don't feel like they could have played any better. It just didn't fall for them. I mean, sure, there were chances that they missed, but I think early on in game one, there were a couple of sequences where Drexel just... They, they stuck Maryland in a singular corner, but they also couldn't get themselves out of there. There were a couple of team bumps and whatnot. So I'd like to see the play come to fruition and have a more solid foundation from the midfield line, as it appears they've got going on now. Go. So more like this, catch the ball when it's given to you and bury it. Aaron does just that. It's a gorgeous first touch, and because Turtles having to go from the back wall down onto the ground, that buys up crucial time. The only way he was going to save that is if he continued with his momentum. Not because Baron had such a great first touch. He was in full control of that situation. Could have slowed it, could have faked it. It was a guaranteed one -on. I'm just going to put this on the record as well before we see it and promptly freak out and figure out what's going on. I think there may have been a forfeit in the third place match. So we're just gonna we're just gonna let that result sit. For right now, we know that Ohio State Dre have nabbed the third place points. So that's 40 to them and 25 to Oakland. Obviously they've both made the playoffs. Oakland is not quite the seed that they want to be, but hey, we can have that conversation over and over again. Maryville's sitting on 25 points if they decide to play Terps Esports, ringing every bit of the goal to try and find an equalizer. JD Knight. Hexy, I think, just for the show there. Turtle couldn't really wrap his car around that. Does at least get a challenge in. Hexy as well, but two against one isn't going to bode well. Surf on the chase. Turtle. It's called off there, isn't he? Actually, Surf. So Turtle left to his own devices, but there is Surf. Fresh with boost. JD Knight towards the net. Well, Marshall by Baron underneath Hexy. A bit of a crossing of the of the beams there, very Ghostbusters. Good steal on the 100 from JD Knight, protecting their own 100 boost. And now slowing things down and looking to at least try and get some sort of midfield control. But the game has slowed down to a point, Galgan, where Terps Esports, they, they, need to be pay, they need to be playing with more pace, not less. Drexel Dragons, they're quite happy to play as it is such an odd play though like when that starts with jd knight right behind the ball you don't want to take the challenge because it's not really going to favor you if you're drexel dragons but at the same time jd knight's not really going anywhere just kind of threatening with low boost maybe you think there's a bit more in the tank but drexel dragons open to inviting the challenge in at least for now first half of the game almost done and dusted and maryland haven't had as many strong scoring chances now Hexy tries to set up a run but pulls away from the goal line as jd knight takes the shot and it saved the Turtle gets it center, and nobody's there in time. Two golden opportunities for Maryland, and they have to back away. Yeah, the biggest mistake there from Hexy. You've got to commit to the run. You've got to go all the way to the back of the net. Otherwise, there might be someone just off the line who can make that save. And that case was proven correct. Drexel Dragons then still 1-0 up, despite the improved form from Terps Esports. Hexy gives it up to Baron, and that's a double commit. They're going to be forced into retreat here. No chance of continuing the attack. Zerf. Lots of boost to use here. Goes for the pinch off JD Knight. Buys more time. They lie in wait. Drexel Dragons ready to embrace the ball, but they're not going to be able to do this right now. Turtle bashes through one. Gets a piece of this one. JD Knight up, takes it to the midfield line, but doesn't get much more momentum on it either. That's a little bit better from Hexy, but again, it's a big clear to all of nobody. You know, now that I consider it, the idea that today, any game that oh, Maryland loses, God. they have not scored in. That idea still stays true, at least for now. Drexel makes it two. 
very solid touch from Baron, and Kevin puts it home effortlessly. Yeah, I think there'll be some argument the Turtle maybe should be getting there, but you've got to applaud the, di the redirection and the power generated behind that to put Drexel Dragons 2-0 up, and that's a crucial point in the game where Turf's Esports are feeling a little bit better about themselves, and yet they still get scored on. 90 seconds left now. Turtle just drives it into the hands of Baron. It's, I, I, I see what they're trying to do here, Galgan, but without any demos or power plays, they're not going to find much, much success with it. Only so much you can do. Rounded with the ball, headed into enemy territory, no support system inbound. Let's see if they can formulate something a bit more sound this time around. Rotations all the way through. Kevin just taps on an open target, and everybody gets caught looking forward without the ball in secure hands. Turks and Sports concede again. Really does feel like fireworks night, doesn't it? Ooh, ah, but as the opposition, you cannot afford to give it away so cheaply. Drexel Dragons, they've they've oiled the gears now. The machine is uh, running smoothly. And you've got to fear for Terps Esports because they look better. And I mean, again, let us, let's not forget how well Drexel Dragons played in game number one with one buzzer beater goal to show for it. I think that the potential was there. Terps Esports might have used up all of their lucky one go. See if they can try and find some form of consolation here. Still not outside of the realm of possibility for a comeback. But that clear is going to make it a lot harder as Turtle just has to catch and collect. JD Knight trying to get it forward for Hexy and does it on target, but slow enough for Kevin to tap it aside. I think you can start to call this game safely home for the Drexel Dragons. We'll see if they manage to notch one more, but you're right on it. You cannot put this Drexel Dragons side away just yet. They've got a crown under their name from week and number three. They've got some wins over Ohio State Gray and Terps before. Both made it to the semifinal sphere this weekend. Drexel Dragons deserve to be here. And for all intents and purposes, oh. they are going to keep this game going for one more second. <laughs> oh, this is, this is so nasty. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, goodness, Drexel Dragons. They are going for that two-peat. They are going, they're, they're, they're determined to be the only team to win two brackets. Now, of course, given there is the proviso that the very best teams, the very best teams that we have seen winning, the likes of OC, the likes of Boise State, the likes of Southern Miss Coca-Cola, who actually have been knocked out earlier in this bracket, and just saying they've not turned up for every single event. So, of course, slightly skewed, but it's got to feel good being number one, Galgan. And they know that they're number one. They know that they're not going to be shifted off number one. So they're trying to play like it. We talk about that, the whole pressure scenario. When you're expected to win something, what does that do to your mental? Drexel Dragons are vibing with it. They are. They look so confident. And the fact that they looked so confident in the face of what could have been a very demoralizing opening five minutes, I love that from them. And I love that for them. At the same time, let's look again at the University of Maryland. They've played eight games of Rocket League so far today. They've won five and lost three. Obviously, they've had to score in the games that they win because that's how this game works. Still scoreless in any game that they lose. Another clean sheet against the University of Maryland. I just, I don't know how much more cut and dry this can become where the team has to be operating on offense at all to give themselves a chance to win these games because you don't want to write them off as soon as you get to the you know two one minute mark and they still haven't found the back of the net but you would think that with the performances we've seen in the past from players like turtle that they would have some level of last minute ice in their veins it has not shown they're still trying to freeze up in that regard and Aaron, my word another strong open Zero hesitation, pure skill. Hexy simply didn't have time to react. Six seconds, that's all it took for the Terps Esports defense to be broken open here in game number three. And this does threaten to landslide, Galgan. Terps Esports have got to find some semblance of defensive stability now, even if it means not scoring down the other end. It's, it's better to try and set up the correct rotation from the ground up uh, rather than continue to concede at the rate that they are. 
it certainly has to go beyond individual prowess right now for Terps Esports because Drexel Dragons can be that three-headed hybrid that they need to be towards the far post, out and back away. Now another chance for Turtle off the ground. It's a confusing shot to be sure. And Hexy's gonna tap that home. Everybody committed to what could have been. And it was anyone's guess where that ball was going. Oh boy. It throw what I said out the window. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's, it's just, it's just, just attack. Just attack and hope for the best. I think. Good on Terps Esports. I'm glad their perseverance has paid off. But Drexel Dragons continue to look threatening with every push forward. Look at this, Baron. Oh my word. Beats two. Kevin. Oh, what a save! But what, like the fact that it's that caliber of save that is needed to deny the goal. Uh, it speaks volumes of where Drexel Dragons are sitting now, both confidence-wise and form-wise. I think that's one of the best things about their offense. The shots are always miraculous. It forces that out of the defense. I mean, we saw the same exact thing for Maryland's first goal here, trying to take a more conventional route for Turtle. But Kevin with the save aside. Baron Demo thins out the numbers offensively for Drexel on the counterattack, and they're blocked from the corner immediately. Baron just trying to delay, but sends it to their own back corner. This is going everywhere but in the hands of Drexel, but still, they're able to work it out. Connections, despite the demo, get it back out to the midfield line. Don't give Maryland the better time of day to get a shot on target. And they've done very well to calm that sequence down. That ball was moving far too quickly, and yet they still did not let it get to the top of their own box. Nothing to be found. Kevin, though. That's sweet. That's nice. Turtle back. <laughs> throws it downfield. It doesn't see anybody in front of him. Baron. It's a good challenge from Hexy here, but again, who's going forward for Turks? The answer is nobody. Everybody is back. Yeah, you've got to try and be a bit more defensive, but I didn't mean this defensive. You've got to have some sort of contingency plan if you do break out of your shell. Really starting to look at getting boost starved here for Terps Esports. They're trying to rotate through the corners, having to send players with little to nothing through that same corner just to get a glimpse of it clear. Aaron over the top. JD Knight's in a tough spot. It has to be Turtle first. Nobody else is rotating back in, but it's okay. Hexy with the carry through onto the back wall. Forces it out center. Turtle doesn't get up fast enough. A bit too far away for the shot for his liking. But JD Knight going center again to Hexy. Save registered by Kevin. And a collection by Zerf to go back. Aaron wants to tap it home. Not a whole lot of boost. Confusing play. Here's the follow by Kevin. But the shot is fluffed. Sent to the side. Maryland have a chance to break out, but they only get as far as the midfield line. It's a big struggle right now for Turks Esports to get anything on the right side of the pitch. We continue to get shut out here as Baron takes another shot on, and the Ooh. second rebound goes just wide. Pinball wizard in the box. You don't want to be relying on those sorts of laws of physics if you're Turks Esports. You might as well roll a die and hope for the best. Baron, not going to reach Kevin. Good work from Turtle, but he spends so much boost. That was a great opportunity for Hexy. Zerf does enough to put him off. Goes for a second touch. JD Knight reaches it to Turtle through the side into no man's land, but Zerf ready to receive. Throws it upfield again. Hexy, big challenge from Zerf. The follow up opportunity to Kevin. Loses out with the second touch. Hexy was hoping to leave for Turtle, maybe, but Turtle maybe said no, go for it. And it's ended up right back where it started. Good challenge, JD Knight. Hexy central. Turtle wait. Over to JD Knight, the rip from Turk will stop before he even left his car. Good start, though, to the final 60 seconds for Turks Esports. They certainly have let the advantage slip just a little bit, but at the same time, Drexel Dragons, they need to show that this was their game to lose from the start. Now, a chaotic play at the top of the box. Kevin brings the hammer down, and Drexel Dragons do just that. Last week, Baron has an incredible, incredible day. This one was more about just staying put. It was a, it effectively a double commit from Terps Esports, but because Baron is just stopping at the red lights and saying, eh, I'm not gonna move. He's in the right place to have a ball. Ricochet Central then sets up perfectly. Drexel Dragon with much needed daylight, and Kevin is styling to put two goals to the good for Drexel Dragons. The toughest part is Hexy did everything he could. Had Burn going for the demo, or Baron rather, grabs the touch, but it's not enough. Still squeezes the defenseless bottom corner, and Drexel Dragons 
try to put another one on ice here. Grab a series lead. It's 30 seconds to go. As you can tell, momentum starting to shift. You can feel it in the air. So put taps. Two games. Just sorry. This would, this would put Dracula Dragons, I should say. Two wins to one. As a fourth goes in for Kevin. But it's the nature of these defeats now, which is looking more and more worrisome for Terps Esports. Even in scoring one, even in having moments where they're looking pretty good, on par with Drexel Dragons. Just feels like Drexel have got that extra gear to shift up into. We praise Turtle for having an incredible individual influence on the last series. We know that Hexy is capable of that as well. But every single one of these Dragons players is legitimately cracked. Every single one of them can change a game on a dime. And we've seen that here. Today, it was Kevin and Baron. Tomorrow, it'll be Zerf and Baron. The day after, it'll just be a bit of Kevin. Where's the threat coming from? The answer is everywhere, Galgan. And Terps don't know where to look. And I think that's what I am so concerned about for the University of Maryland right here is for all of this talk that we can have about the team firing on all cylinders, looking like they're ready to win any match thrown their way. The space between being on their best and, you know, what would what some people would describe as their A game and not performing to the level that they need to is starting to feel less like a spectrum and more like a light switch fully yeah. on or fully off that's what concerns me for this roster right now because you said it every single player on maryland needs to be operating at their highest level not just in this particular series but as a rocket league team the best teams are forged in those team plays where all three players are on the same level on the same page at all times it's amazing that you can implement the strategy of turtle go score and it works out a good amount of times but some level of depth has to be shown to grind out a series like this where you know drexel have beaten you once before albeit in a close series and you don't want them to do it to you again if, if anything this is just making drexel dragons look the part uh we we had a question of, of ut dallas when they were top of the table last week we were saying you know are, are, are they really part of this true top echelon of rally cry collegiate series teams or are they sitting in that pack just behind and it was a sort of result yesterday where terps wins a relatively mid-table team at the point and we're thinking eh, maybe maybe not and maybe now we're seeing that they're actually quite similar but drexel dragons who they themselves they've lost to southern miss coca-cola all right they've lost to ut dallas as well but that was four to three we have to compliment Drexel Dragons on the improvement that we've been seeing from them week to week because their trajectory has only been up, I would argue. But eventually, you do have to find a little bit of a dip somewhere. And Terps Esports, this might be one of the most important goals that Hexy scores this series. A crucial lead. Have to make sure that upwards trajectory is met with upwards eyesight, but it's so tough when you're down on the ground to keep looking up, down, ceiling, ground. All of a sudden, you've been scored on. That is a textbook way to get a goal. The Terps Esports, they start off early here with the lead and forcing Drexel Dragons to be a bit more hesitant about how they move forward, but trying to catch JD Knight off guard, unsuccessful. It's another midfield hold for Merrill. How do they fight from behind again? Drexel Dragon, the one goal lead seems, well, thin for Terps Esports. It looks very beatable. And the Drexel Dragons will know this, but they'll also know that there is something about this Terps roster. Give them the freedom of the field and they will score time and time and time again. Just rewind to game number one to find that out. Three goals completely unopposed. Bump midfield. Kevin it tries to go, but JD Knight's in the way. Backboard, oh, almost finds the shot, actually. Unfortunate there as Kevin recycles. But much, much better from the team in orange. Short passing, working a treat. At the vision, moving forward, JD Knight will try to pick up the pieces. Hexy jumps early here to delay. Had behind support in the sense of Turtle. He's gonna get a solid challenge off of this play, Zerf is it sideways. 
Axel Dragon is forced to delay here rather than take some steps forward into the zone. Kevin now finds Baron in the corner. The turtle will catch and collect. Bit of a scramble to get that one going in a meaningful direction, however. So Hexy will take over responsibility for Maryland. Top of the box, turtle shot taken. Observe. Early denial, important for the Drexel Dragons. They don't want that ball to sweep through to the goal line, but they continue to let the back wall go somewhat unopposed. Double commit is not what you need in this situation. Turtle with a nice foot down, trying to fake everybody out and almost does set just wide on the follow up shot. Uh, leaving the backboard open because they know that Terps are going to get suckered into placing it there and that means that it's not at least initially a shot on target gout and I think that the logic is sound uh, but it's what you're going to do after that step in the play uh, and I don't think the Drex Dragons are necessarily dealing with it perfectly but they're at least still not conceding that second at least not yet let's put a hold on that oh what a pinch off the backboard from Zerp unfortunate the Baron was not able to continue the good work. Kevin now to clean up the pieces, but JD Knight, I mean, he's been everywhere this game, JD Knight. Fair play, of course, the goal scorer. Uh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, I think the assist there to Hexy uh, scoring the goal. Zerp over to Barrow, good pop up, but there's too much whip on that ball. And it's another minute that goes by, Galgan, another minute where Turks remain in the lead. See the game plan from the University of Maryland, however, just trying to be that contact hitter of sorts. Make sure you keep it away from the Drexel Dragons. Don't give them the better chance to score. Turtle jumps up high as we can near that minute mark. Zerf follows through, has plenty of time here, it seems, against all three players from Maryland. Baron follows up, but it's well high and away above the crossbar. Kevin has to back up quickly, grabs it, goes off the ceiling, trying to test for the challenge not to be. Big bump out of the way, oh! and it works against them as Hexy cleans up shot. It really is deja vu. I think definitely less dominant a game from Drexel Dragons. Terps Esports certainly with a louder voice in this one. And yet again, not a clear cut opportunity for Terps Esports, but they grab that opportunity with both hands. That's looking a bit better. Two goals to the good. 60 seconds left. Maybe manufacturing a third. Zerf with a much needed save. Now for the transition. Stopped immediately by Hexy. The defense is so proactive. I love it. Great level of confidence. And finding the touch is crucial, of course. They miss those. And Drexel gets a look at a first and an equalizer if they can. 40 seconds. The first oh! almost. But Kevin puts a dent in the woodwork. Now Hexy to take it back the other way. He lost more time on the clock. Zerf goes center over to Kevin. Ooh! Beautiful read. And they catch everybody looking. Oh, they have got some magnificent vision in this team. Zerf going for the center circle. Kevin finds it. I think there is a little more power uh, put on that ball by the challenge. I think of JD Knight in there. And that's what gives it the extra lick of pace to beat that keeper. One oh. goal game. Oh no, it's Baron to recycle the ball. 20 seconds, Drexel Dragons now forced out of the zone midfield and they do not control that, but Kevin given enough time to send it to the corner. Baron centers up, surf with a free flip. You had to at that point, get to the ball, make sure the Maryland couldn't clear it, but it looks like clear it they will. Hexy does not follow through on that, but Turtle blocks the obvious pop-up. It's headed towards the ground. And it's a win for the University of Maryland, an even series as if you expected any different from these two teams. But that finish, I don't know. We start to get a couple more question marks here. <laughs> uh, and exclamation marks on top of that as well. Uh, I am no disrespect to the University of Maryland. I am truly baffled how this has not been a 4-0 sweep. I genuinely think we should be here uh, talking about how that was an extraordinary series from the Drexel Dragons, how Terps looked pretty good in spaces, decently defensively. There were some pop-off moments, but not enough to see them to deep into this series. But deep into this series, we are, Galgan. Mm. It's 2-2, two -two, seemingly uh, against everything that tells me that this should be domination alert from Drexel Dragons. I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless, and that is a rarity. <laughs> yeah, I like. I feel inclined to believe in what you're saying, in in some regards, but at the same time, I just 
if you want to talk about potential output for both of these teams, you, you would want to think that it's higher for both sides. And maybe we have seen as high as it can go for either team, especially Maryland, who we've seen time and time again. Some of the games that they've played earlier on today, the beginning of this series, the end of the series against Oakland, fantastic performances, staying true to their identity and showing why they deserve to win these series and win this closed qualifier. But at the same time, I'm, I'm waiting for the game where both teams step it up to 100 at the same time we get even for a couple of minutes you know take away the misses at the midfield the miscommunications in the corner all of these tiny mistakes that we know these players can rectify but it's stringing all of that together for a consistent amount of time that's when we really start to open up and understand who has the edge and the upper hand in this particular series. Drexel Dragons have done everything but score and Baron another early goal. I'm telling you, the only, the, the greatest ally that Terps Esports have right now is Drexel Dragons' inability to put it in the back of the net. The reason why they've scored so many goals, Galgan, it's because of how many times they get into shooting positions, but their conversion rate has been abysmal. At least on this occasion, they've got the tee up, the Shadow Striker in position to put that one goal away. But Turple sends it straight back at you. I tell you what, now would be an excellent time for Turps to hit, as you say, 100%. And listen, I love that it's turtle scoring. Get back into shooting form here and take it where the defenders can't save. But again, that's a sequence that Drexel can't let happen right there. Turtle has too much time to turn around for that ball. Takes a very grounded shot. It's not what both teams want to be doing right now, but at least Maryland have the tie. They're still fighting in this one as if we were doing anything else other than going to game seven, because why not between these two squads? They deserve it. On the face of it, I would have been like, yeah, of course it's going to be game number seven. My, my eyes tell me differently. Uh, but again, I'm willing to be convinced by Terps Esports. It's game number five. No matter how you've gotten here, you are here nonetheless. And after going 1-0 down early, you have found the strength to grab that next goal. I love this uh, look-ahead play from JD Knight. Big demo. Turtle freebie. Oh, no! Turtle did not score that, and yet just a little assistance is all it takes from your friend on the other side, Baron, coming in from the near post. I mean, listen, as much as we can mock a play like that, you have to make a touch on that ball, and it's tough coming in from the near post to get the angle just right. A couple pixels wide, and that one's going across the goal line where nobody else from Maryland is following up. They still grab the goal. They have the lead. You have to think this inspires Turks Esports with a bit more confidence to understand, hey, we can do the same thing this time around, try and close out a series from 2-2 in two straight games. They've got the lead to justify. JD Knight. <laughs> oh, if he'd gotten it past Zerp, that would have been supreme. But his Hexy, nevertheless, on target. Oh! What a read from JD Knight, big save, still on target, and a huge reaction save from Kevin. It's still not over, watch out. Kevin has to go all the way over to the other side of the pitch and win a challenge to set up a transition play. Surf, no dunk, because there's JD Knight again. I swear, is this Star Trek? He's got a mobile transporter on him. Dumps galore as well, pure chaos ringing through. And couple games early, but you expect it from both teams getting a little desperate, the right amount of calculated desperation needed. Demo on the entrance to the offensive zone onto Baron is going to make the defensive rotation a bit more staggered for the Drexel Dragons, and they're uh -oh. finding out the hard way. Baron, big save, delayed there top of the box onto JD Knight. But here's Turbo to set up Hexi and Surf with a beautiful read. There was a moment of just hesitation where Surf turns and he's like, wait, where's Kevin? Kevin's supposed to be there, and he wasn't. The Drexel Dragons rotation is failing them right now because of this Terps aggression in the midfield. The demos are coming out as well. It's fantastic to see. Hexy not afraid to go back to secure the boost. The infield pass is weak. Big double bump. Hexy, the touch required of him. Baron with a reset to Kevin. The shot stopped by JD Knight. These shots are coming from 30, 40 meters out, Galgan. It's not going to be enough.
And the demo still raining through. It's a double onto the side of Terps Esports. It's not often you see a player launched with the same velocity as the ball, but my word, Drexel wants it right now. They just need to score. That feels like the most important part and piece of the puzzle, and yet they can't get it done. Again, the dreaded corner getting stuck here, trying to fake players out. JD Knight gets it past two because of the overcommit into that sequence. Middle of the field, loss of control for Drexel. It's immediately on frame, and they've got 60 seconds to try and find some semblance of cohesion because it's all starting to slip away. Now trying to slip the ball through and Zerk, however, has support behind just the low dribble. Not gonna work out. Literally taught an entire language to the defense there so that they can read him. Turtle, midfield, second touch, Zerk. My goodness, that was a full stop, wasn't it? Baron going for the bump. It's over to Kevin. Great launch, but JD Knight again. MVP of this game, undoubted. 30 seconds to hold on to that award. It requires not conceding. Set up! Goal! They did concede! Oh dear, what's happened? Terps Esports, one miss. Kevin waiting in the corner, rent free, and Zerf at the top of the box does not give you a second thought about saving that away. Drexel Dragons, 2-2 in the game, 2-2 in the series. JD Knight looking at his two teammates asking, what on earth was that, lads? What on earth was that? I was nowhere near the play. How could I save that? Drexel Dragons with the wind underneath their wings. They're flying high. Kevin, the follower! Zerf 3-2! They've pulled it out from underneath the University of Maryland. Kevin gives all the time in the world, and Zerf delivers again. 12 seconds now for a comeback for Maryland. Otherwise, Drexel Dragons are on the cusp of a two-peat. The Terps tremble. And the Dragons roar on DFH Stadium. Incredible turnaround from Drexel Dragons, but is it over yet? Turtle, oh, what a save! Twice the goal scorer, but the game winner was that save. Incredible match point. It's the setup you want, the setup you dream of if you're a fan of Terps Esports. And it comes up short, but the work that needed to be done was one minute earlier. You have to slow Drexel down. We go back to this conversation of having last minute ice. It's not there for Maryland right now. Drexel have that step up that they can take to elevate their gameplay in the closing moments. And for all the work that JD Knight was doing during that game that you so rightfully called out, Zerf was always in the right spot at the right time for every single pass that squeaked its way through to the top of the box, scored two crucial goals. And it's the Drexel Dragons now with two chances to go back to back as closed qualifier champions here. It bears repeating, every one of those players can pop off at any moment. And Zerf's pop off wasn't mechanical and it certainly wasn't tactical. It was individual and it was doing the basics right. Be in a good place for any sort of carnage that unfolds in front of net. And when you shoot your shot, get it on target. And he did twice. And he made a fantastic save. And this is arguably the most damaging of defeats for Terps Esports. I said right at the beginning of this game, Hexy scoring one of arguably the most crucial goals in the entire series. But it wasn't to be. That was as good a performance as we've seen from Terps Esports, and it still wasn't enough. They need to find another level, Galgan. Merely working to force game seven, the place they found Drexel before and could not get it done. But so much left on the plate just to get them oh! in the first place, and mid. Field calamity occurs. It's Aaron to score early again on the other side of the field. I thought that was a Kevin extra touch. It wasn't. Neither of the players in the way of that shot managed to get it. It was a straight, a straight and true run down the boulevard for the Drexel Dragons and for Baron. He was Red Baron, red in the face earlier with that own goal, but that is a long distant memory. Drexel Dragons, four and a half minutes from two wins in a bracket on the bounce. Stand atop that stage, 
loud and proud who they are and what they've done to get to this point. Heaven off the back wall, no follow through, but forces the double out and Hexy's bumped back into the ball. Zerf with a follow through. Drexel have everything going for them. Look at the open space forcing Hexy out. Kevin goes to the back wall. Oh it's another goodness. double. And it is pure desperation and nothing short of it for Terps Esports. They need to get something going and going quickly. Yeah, they need uh, They need to calm down. <laughs> Easier said than done, but it's exactly what they need because this defense is absolutely shambolic. Drexel Dragons are driving straight through, unopposed to this victory that they so richly want. Playing too fast for their own good. Drexel Dragons making the ball ping around at light speed, and yet Terps Esports feel like they need to make the first touch possible. But it's such a tough read to make consistently. One miss is enough to give Drexel Dragons a good look on target. Two misses is essentially going to do it for any scoring chance that this side in blue can secure. And look at how strung out the University of Maryland feels right now. Demoed, not taking the touches they want. Baron gets some clear air and looks for a flip reset. Set it sets up surf for a shot kevin gets to rotate in and finally a clearance a chance on a quick break but it's blocked just as quickly the drexel dragons not winning maryland any quarter oppositional awareness is is out of this world drexel dragons the communications you can tell are flowing because there's complete knowledge on where these individuals are and what the right play is to stop them from getting onto the ball. We saw the pop up back there when we knew someone was lying on wait in the wing, but there was always going to be someone lying in wait central. Surf with the carry to Kevin. Two minutes gone, three goals to the good. 3-0 at 3-0-3, heavy is the head that wears the crown, but the Drexel Dragons crown's getting a bit heavier tonight, they can feel it. Zerf wants four, Zerf almost gets it, but the bar denies Kevin on the follow through. You have to think, Baron sizing this one up, and Turtle with a jump will be dispossessed by a low boost Baron. Here's a clear through, but Zerf stands tall, and again, no chance for Terps Esports to get anything Got going. Finally, now off the back wall, and you're right to call it, that has to be a goal that you score. Turtle would not let Kevin go. Put the handcuffs on. You have the right to remain silent. Eventually does get the turnaround too little too late. JD Knight uh, definitely deserves a goal after his efforts last game. One down Galgen, two more to find. Oh, struggles though off the kickoff. It's Turtle who's committing to this with low boost. Shady Knight on the bump run doesn't find anything. You almost want Shady Knight to take the quick shot. And with Drexel Dragons not back in rotation. But here's Kevin from far away. Has the demo in the back. Oh, Wide one clear. Sir, no, tries to hit up Baron, but it's too far. If you let that ball go and Baron jumps for it, you've got your fourth. But on the other end, Maryland threat. And the second Turtle has to play it to the sidewall. And a big clear transition plays a reigning supreme. He's got a hat trick of assists in this particular game. Zerf overthought that potential one. Good stomp on here from Kevin. And Zerf forced back. JD Knight straight into Zerf, unfortunately for him. Oh, Zerf needs to get a piece of that. Does so. Lies in wait. Kevin still in the dangerous area. Hexy to JD Knight to Turtle. Transition complete. Backboard. Lovely touch from Red Baron out to the side. Zerf. Follow through, keep it out of the danger zone and well to do. Hexy with a catch of the midfield line, but it's still eluding the control of Turks Esports, and that is an almost open backfield. JD Knight gets the save away, but for how much longer can they prolong the inevitable every single time the Drexel Dragons get in the zone? They get at least one solid chance out through the corner, solid ball for somebody to jump to. But JD Knight can't get there fast enough. The challenge is all that can be purchased. And the Drexel Dragons, a beautiful redirect back towards the frame. Hexy has to flail at it. Baron now against JD Knight, one-on-one. -on -one. The turtle coming in in support. It's well wide, but 60 seconds left. Have the Drexel Dragons done enough, taking enough time off the clock? They've gone punch for punch with Terps Esports, and it has worked a treat, because as much as Terps Esports would want to throw a little bit more into the attack, they've also not wanted to concede those passing lanes to Drexel Dragons. They've had to rotate back quicker than they would have liked. They would have wanted to play more aggressively, but it's had to be conservative. 2v1. Baron on target, Zerf with the secure, gets his goal, and that might be all she sang. 
And you hear the bells ringing. Victory lap on the way for the Drexel Dragons. 36 seconds to close it out. We've seen crazier comebacks. The Turks Esports have not been granted the better time of day to get anything like that going just yet. AD Knight tries to inspire something, but I think the Drexel Dragons are starting to feel it now. It was 4-3 to the Dragons one week ago. 4-2 unless we have truly miraculous occurrences. Turtle stopped on target. Baron right place. Where's the third Galgan? There they are. Hexy, no triple tap. The shot's wide from Turtle. And I really do think that is it. The Drexel Dragons, the only team to win two brackets. They happen to be back to back. They were already the number one seed in the playoffs going into this particular game, into this series. Well, they have now rubber stamped an extra 100 points onto their total. 215, I believe that to uh, totals up to uh, for Terps. They're going to have to settle for a top three berth. Still much better than they probably were expecting. But I think they're going to be a little bit feeling hard done by themselves after this particular series same time it took seven games the first time around for drexel to put away maryland this time six is all they get and what a performance when you look back not only at this series but a reflection of all four closed qualifiers for both of these teams because we cannot overstate the fact that both of these teams played all four weekends and they well and truly grew into their own as these closed qualifiers progressed but you pointed that out in the middle of the series. Drexel's trajectory has been going up and up and up and up. And they continue on that climb here with a statement win, putting away the University of Maryland for their second time in honestly a very small amount of series in these four weekends of play. Everything's looking up for this team who started off the event in the first weekend of play with an immediate seven game loss to UT Dallas. And at that point in time, you and I both sat back and thought, okay, UT Dallas were the clear favorites coming in, but they struggled a little bit. You know, Drexel performed pretty well, but is that really what we can expect from them? And how naive were we to think <laughs> that the Drexel Dragons would not improve upon that form? They've shown consistency, not only that, but improving upon where they were at the start of the event, and then some. It's truly beautiful to know. And as much as we will give credit to Terps for, for reacting well to, the, to the, the outright oppression that they suffered in game number one, and the rather hard-fought battlefield that they took to in game number three, I will maintain my point from, from five minutes ago. I think we should be talking about a sweep, really. But the fact that Drexel Dragons, the only complaint that I can have on them is that they got a little bit unlucky in places and that they should probably do a couple of shooting training packs so that they don't hit the woodwork 11 billion times. Uh, that is picking... Uh, oh, there's a, there's a phrase, isn't there? That's, that's picking holes in uh, what is a beautiful uh, tapestry of events that we've seen culminate in today. The best Drexel Dragons have ever looked. I think this is absolutely comfortable top five team, even given, you know, the sort of weird, like, how the seeding has worked out with some teams turning up sometimes and, and some teams turning up not so much. Drexel Dragons have turned up all four weeks and they look so much better for it. And at the same time, Terps Esports, what's not to like about their run as well, because constantly improving, finding their own identity, going through roster changes, and just trying to slot themselves into a top spot. Yes, there is a question to be asked about getting these wins over top teams in the field. Started off, you know, with a win over Ohio State great early on in the first week in the play, but losing quickly to Oklahoma Christian, losing to the Pescados, obviously losing the first time around to Drexel, but still getting a win over UC Berkeley. So there's there's plenty of arguments that you could make about Turfs Esports and their improvement over these four weekends of play. But I think they're in a solid spot now. I say that. At the same time, their play style is one that feels very defined and rigid, where if it's on, it's absolutely on. And opponents mm. will have somewhat of a struggle to deal with it. But at the same time, you 
wait to see if the University of Maryland can evolve past that, try and bring another level, another gear that they can shift into during the playoffs to throw their opponents off guard and avoid results like this. But finally, the end of the fourth and final closed qualifier. Playoffs are waiting in the wings, but the Drexel Dragons are taking home two closed qualifier crowns, and I'm sure they are ecstatic to do so. They lead the way in the seedings. They are top spot ahead of UT Dallas. The aforementioned Terps who slot into third place ahead of Southern Miss Coca-Cola, Boise and OC. That's 110, 100 and 100 points. It is then a significant 40 points back to where we find Ohio State Gray, who themselves, we believe, won that third place playoff uh, through a forfeit. Uh, then we got New Haven, uh, Pescados, Oakland, uh, the Gamecocks, Cal, Maryville, Bowling Green, Thomas College, and Southern Miss Gold. Those are your 16 teams, folks. Of course, it is still to be decided if those 16 teams will indeed take to the field uh, in a week's time. Uh, we do obviously have to wor worry about you know a couple of scheduling conflicts here and there. We do have, of course, waiting in the wings lights of Michigan State White, uh, Northeastern as well, who will be ready to, to take up that opportunity should it head their way. Uh, but I think really what we're looking at here, Galgan, is those top six teams dragons dallas mary uh sorry maryland southern miss coca-cola boise state and oklahoma christian i really think that is our top echelon maybe ut dallas and terps in a chasing pack behind the other four uh, but that's half the fun of it isn't it we can speculate we can theory craft in a week's time uh, we're going to get answers to those questions Let's keep in mind, though, as we move into the playoffs, because we're going to put all 16 of these teams into the seeding as they place in terms of points. There's going to be a bit of player skill, MMR rank, whatnot, factored into the final seeding. I think yeah. that's that's the right call to make, because otherwise, if you just put all 16 teams into a double elimination bracket, you get fourth seed Southern Miss Coca-Cola in the first round going up against 13th seeded Maryville. I yeah, don't yeah. think that makes any sense at all <laughs> and rightfully so the tournament administration also thinks that doesn't really make any sense at all so the seating may fluctuate a little bit before we get to playoffs but the fact of the, of the matter remains we have 16 hungry teams all the way down the list who want to make upsets happen make chaos happen prove that they deserve to be towards the top spot when they may not have been in consideration for such as the event kicked off the playoffs are where it all counts though and i am thrilled that all of these teams have a chance to prove themselves because the sky well and truly is the limit well our hopes and our dreams are sky high. We hope that your enjoyment of the Rally Cry Collegiate Series uh, matches that enthusiasm. We absolutely love uh, you being here, so please be sure to follow along here on Rally Cry 2. We're going to be back same time, same place, in a week, Saturday. And we're going to be joined by a special guest on Sunday as well. So uh, be sure to tune in for that. Uh, but from Galgan, from myself, from the wonderful production team behind the scenes, we're going to bid you adieu. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. We'll see you next week for the playoffs. Take care. We get how uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's gonna happen next? We are. Because our future is the future. The life we have chosen has prepared us for this. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day. We're gonna save families from disasters, and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. We invite you to join us. The next greatest generation is now.